welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this very beautiful rainbow pastel gloriousness that I've got going on in my eyes right now which is kind of making me crave some mackerel has been achieved with the help of this gorgeous little creature here this is the sugar pill fun size palette it literally just is called asterisk fun size mini color palette so if you want to see what the inside of this looks like and find out just how well these pastel colours perform, how much building was required, did they blend or did they blend away? The only way to get an answer to all of those questions is to grab a drink, grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I would have shown you this in the intro. This is gorgeous. This is the Sugar Peel Fun Size Millie Palette. With a little body cat on front. Shows you the shades on the back. Lovely bit of holographic printing there. And then when you open the palette, you have the same little pussycat on the front, but on the back you have the Sugar Pill logo. And the ingredients on the back of here, so if, you, if you're the sort of person that needs to know the ingredients, you're either going to have to keep the box or cut the strip off and stick it on the back of your palette. It has a gorgeous little heart shaped mirror with level up your makeup here. I don't know if you can see them, but it's got the little. Come on. There we go. The little um, life hearts there. <laughs> I'll show you this upside down because. Oh, actually, I can bend it back. That's good. And here are the shades. I'm tilting it backwards so the holographic doesn't flush it out too much. So I do that, you can't really see the colours properly. So. Um, if I remembered to do swatches, I'll put them up here now. If not, well, I didn't do swatches. Right, um, this is a teaching channel and because of my chronic pain, I don't blend as quickly as I used to. Um, and because it's a teaching channel, I go through each step individually so that complete beginners who've never picked up a brush before will still be able to follow my tutorials. So, if you are slightly more advanced skill wise, uh, and I'm going too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there somewhere. Please feel free to use it. I won't be offended because unless you tell me, sweetie pie, I'm not going to know. Right, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and a primed and I use my usual antiperspirant primer, details of which are linked in the description below. You can see I really use this. Um, I've got my back up ready, in case you're wondering. Let's get you zoomed in. There we go. Now, uh, on my eyes, I've got my usual Crow and Pebble primer in shade Cotton. Now, because when I um, I bought a half size pot of this to try when I bought their pastel pigments, and you can see I have well and truly hit pan on this because I have used this consistently ever since. Um, this is better than my soft ochre paint pot because it goes on, it's not sticky, 
it doesn't crease and you don't have to tap pigment on you don't have to set it because it's it's not sticky but you don't have to tap the pigment on you can start blending straight away and I love that love 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 uh, they were nice enough to give me a discount code I have got that listed in the description box along with all my others and they will clearly state whether or not I earn from them right just quickly I want to talk through the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes because I have deep set eyes which are sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes um, but I have the same issues that people with hooded lids have in that I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my eyelid I can't just cut the socket I have to cut up onto the upper lid and even when I use glitter glue I get a bare patch right through there let me explain why now when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It is only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have a hooded lid, either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. You can follow anybody's tutorial. Get a brush something like this or a pencil brush and on your static lid sketch out where you need your new crease line to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So just use slightly smaller blending brushes and you should be absolutely fine. Now I've got deep set eyes which are sometimes referred to as double lidded. This is the eye that I'm blind in, so I'm going to use this one to demonstrate, because if I close this one, I haven't got a clue if I'm still in focus. Now, if I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back away. All right. And if I cover my static lid and close it, you can see again, I've got lid there that tucks back away. And it's those two sections of lid rubbing together that gives me the transference and rubs my glitter off. Now, the way that we deal with it is slightly different. What we have to do when we're putting our crease colour on is just keep stopping, relaxing our brows and just check we've come up high enough that you can see it just above our crease. And it really is that simple. So, it's time to start putting some colour onto my eyeballs. Not my eyeballs, my eyelids, my eyeballs, that'd be ridiculous. Right, I'm going to start off with this Rolling Lang Nickel Chic Pro Crease Brush, which as you can see is a nice round, fluffy, but not too splayed out brush. So I still want to have a bit more control over where it blends to. So I don't want it to be this kind of, I want it to come up to more of a point so I have more of a control. And I'm going to start off by going into, I think I'll start off with cheat code. There's not a lot of kick up in pan, that's good to see, but it picks up on the brush nicely. And I'm going to start off just popping this just here on the inner part of my upper lid and you can see there what I mean you can literally just start blending straight away now obviously these are shimmers uh, these are pastels rather so to get any depth of colour you will have to build them up but as you can see that builds up quite easily without too much hassle at all now I'm using circular movements. When I'm coming towards the nose I go this way. When I'm coming away from the nose I go this way. Because I'm 45 years old. I've lost 13, 14 stone in the last few years. And as a consequence, the skin on my eyelids moves. So by doing the circular movement, you're very gently stretching the skin. 
to make sure you don't get any white creases anywhere or barcoding. Now I do tend to get that this side because look how deep those creases are just there. That is where my eye got pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic. So that's 40 year old damage, which didn't actually show itself until I was about 39, 40, those creases first appeared. I'm just going to bring this down. I may end up coming up here with a micellar pad later just to tidy that edge up. Um, but regular viewers will know I don't generally have a plan in mind unless I'm doing like a palette bingo or I'm recreating another look um, inspired by a different creator. Um, generally I don't know what I'm going to do until I sit down and start doing it. Now your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you photoshop them. Um, so it's always best just to sit back every so often and just check that the shapes you're doing look about the same. Now I like to try and leave a bit of a gap between the brow and the shadow just so the brow highlight stands out better when we get to that stage. Right, I've got a microfiber cloth here that I'm just going to clean the brush with. I did used to use colour switches but I find the microfiber cloth is much gentler on the bristles. Um, especially if you've got natural hair. These are synthetic but if you've got natural hair um, I wouldn't advise using a colour switch because um, they can really tear the, the natural hairs out. Right, I'm going to go into 8-bit now. this in the middle. I mean you can see even though it's pastel you do get colour straight away but you can of course build it up which is what I'm doing. And again tiny little circular movements I'm holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on the skin of my lid as possible because your eyelids are the most fragile skin on your body. Now what I'm doing when these two colours meet, I'm literally barely touching it at all just with the tip of the bristles and just blurring the two together like that so we get a nice gentle blend. If you prefer a more editorial look where you have a harsh line between the colours then that's absolutely fine, you do you. Um, but for this look today, I fancy doing a little bit of blending. I don't always. I, um, the, um, I've got a few editorial looks that I've done. Uh, I actually had some comments on my Wet n Wild Bed of Roses tutorial that I needed to learn how to blend. Mm. And I'm like, well, mm, actually, no, it's a editorial look. But, you yeah, know, thanks for the comment. It's nice to know you're watching. And again, just buffing over the two there. Just checking out, I've got about the same shape both sides. I think this side needs to come up a fraction. No, that's better. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day and watching me while you're getting ready? Well, if you're at the start of your day, I hope you have a very good one. If you're at the end of your day, I hope you had a good day. And if you didn't, I hope tomorrow is better. Uh, Sugar Pill was one of the um, companies that I wanted to try this year, one of the brands I wanted to try. Um, I'm going to play one. I'm still using the same brush. Yeah, Sugar Pill was one of the, the um, brands that I wanted to try this year. And... Uh, I started off with some of their individual shadows because I won a giveaway from Panic Antics. Um, she said if you can work out what's different about me in this film, first person to get it right wins either a Sephora or an Ulta voucher. And I commented thinking, well, I can't shop from either of those shops, you know, but I will at least let her know that I am watching. And she messaged me to say, congratulations, you've won. Which one would you like? And I'm like, Ugh. 
Uh, can I be a pain? I'm actually in the UK. Would it be possible, please, to either have um, Beautylish or Beauty Bay? Completely understand if you can't, because obviously I knew the rules when I entered. I knew what the prize was. Um, and she's like, no, no, it's absolutely fine. Which would you prefer? I said, well, Beauty Bay's in the UK, so it's probably going to be the easiest if that's okay with you. And the prize was 50 bucks. So I was expecting the equivalent of 50 bucks, which at the time was about, I think what the exchange rate at the time was about 44, 45 quid. Bless her heart, she did 50 quid for me. And I'm like, oh wow, well, thank you so much. And I got, tried a few um, of the, I got quite a, I got some loose or some individual shadows from a couple of brands that I'd been wanting to try. Sugar Pill being one of them, and I was actually, I was, I was reasonably impressed with the quality, but I wasn't like blown away. I wasn't like, wow, these are the best shadows I've ever used in my entire life. Um, so that was a little bit confusing that people were so, oh, Sugar Pill, because I just wasn't, oh, Sugar Pill, if you know what I mean. But I do like their quality, they're very, very good quality, they do blend together very well. Um, I'm just cleaning this brush off. I'm going to grab still a Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro, but this is their eyeshadow brush rather than their crease brush. So you can see it's more oval. I haven't got any colour on it yet. I just want to see if I can buff those two there together. Because where I've got dry patch here and um, creasing, it's not blending as well as it has on this side. Right, let's pick up a little bit more player one. Try. See if I can get that to there we go. That's looking better. See if I have things like this, I leave it in so you can see. Because I think it's important to see that things don't always go right first time. Right, I'm going to continue with player one. I'm just going to run this through my crease to kind of underline those colours that I've put in. And this is where if you've raised your crease you'll be following your new line you've done. And if you have deep set eyes like me you'll be relaxing and just checking you can see it like so. You will eventually get to the stage where you'll know where your crease is and you'll know how high to bring it up <clears throat> so you won't need to keep sketching it. Just doing some really light like buffing along that line just to sort of buff the edges out a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same this side. With this eye I can actually close to show you what I'm doing. But obviously if I do that with the other eye there's not an awful lot of makeup going to be happening. So you can see I'm just blending and bringing it right down into the corner there. There now you can see what I mean I hope about the tiger striping that I get. I do actually have to stretch this lid out because of the creasing being so deep there, but don't do that if the normal procedure that I use for this eye works for you. I can't decide whether to do a cut crease or not. No, I don't normally do cut creases straight away. I like to see whether the pigments are strong enough to hold up themselves. So I think I will go in Oh, next door's kids are awake. <coughs> right, uh, this is a Morphe M321, which arrived broken, so I had a bit of mending to do. They sent me a replacement, but I figured I'd carry on using this anyway. And I'm going to start off with, I think, continue, question mark, which is the lemon. Now I'm going to 
grab a little mirror so I can look down into it so that you can actually see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to pop that onto the inner part of my bonnet. Now what I like about this, the majority of pastel shades when you see them have some kind of shimmer to them because shimmers are a lot easier to make, particularly if you're using a lighter pigment. Um, but I love the fact that this whole palette is matte. Right, grab some more of the continue. And how far across did I take it? I took it to about there, didn't I? As I said, I do have to stretch this lid out. Otherwise what happens is I get loose pigment pack into the creasing rather than being blended on. And then as I move my eye through the dye, I get cascades of it coming down, which is not good, especially when you're driving and you suddenly get powder in your eyes and you're doing the speed limit and not over it. Allegedly. Okay, I'm going to go into, I think, I'm going to high school, which is the orange. And I'm going to pop that overlapping on that yellow. Just pop it into the middle of the lid here. It's a really nice shade. Hmm. I mean, you can see that goes on so nicely. I did do a more simple look with just the first three colours, uh, which is on my Insta when I first got this palette because I couldn't resist playing with it. Um, so have a look at that and let me know if you want to see me recreate that one. But I thought I'd try and use as many colours as I can today. Right, I'm going to go into Level Up, which is this gorgeous sort of corally pink. And I'm just going to pop that onto the outer edge. I'm very lightly running up the edge of the purple there, just gently. As I said, I'm probably going to come up with a micellar wipe in a minute and just straighten all that up. Hmm. This is really quite a versatile palette. It's nice to see an actual rainbow pastel palette where you've actually got decent pigmentation on it. I do get more fallout this side. That's because this eyelid moves more. Uh, I think I need to add a little bit more orange to the middle of this one. I've lost a bit of the orange. Let's just build that back up in the middle. There we go. Right, I will just show you what I'm going to do with the micellar wipe. I know this looks dirty, but it's because I'm currently using uh, charcoal micellar water uh, from Lecura, which is the brand from Aldi. 
So I'm just going to tidy up the inner corner there and then come along under the lash line and keeping exactly the same angle come up and curve like that just to tidy the edge up then I'm going to do the same this side tidy the inner corner up run it along up and curve see so that's, that's, it's such a simple way. I, I don't like using tape because it gives you an unrealistically harsh line. And also, for it to be sticky enough that it's not going to let powder go underneath it, it it's, it's going to be pulling that sensitive skin on your eye around and I don't like that. Right, I'm going to pause you just while I pop some foundation and everything on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So you're going to see me instantly and I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello, I am back. As you can see, I decided to make the brows match this bit. It's the Revolution Pro Pigment Pomade in trendy turquoise I've got quite a few of their pomades now um, I have this turquoise one I have ocean blue uh, royal purple was the first one that I bought I've got burgundy red uh, I've got hot pink that I haven't unpacked yet and then I've got two Colourpop ones, which are actually cream gel liners, but I use them in my brow anyway. In Punch, no, not Judy, and Puppy. Punch Puppy, oh no, that's not nice. <sighs> right. I'm going to go in with this brush now. And I'm going to go in to... I think I'm going to go into Rage Quit, which is the pink pink rather than the corally pink. But it should blend in just. I have a loose hair. Oh no, it was attached. Ouch. It should blend in nicely over the edges there. I'm just going to run that along my lower lash line and again this side now by running the pink up the outside like that at the moment I'm really struggling my fibro is making my eyes super super watery um, and my hay fever this year on top of it has not helped so I haven't been able to do liner pretty much all, or most of the year, since about February, March. But by continuing the colour here with the corner colour and taking it just up the outside slightly, it's, it gives you that same effect of elongating the eye up. So there's a tip for you if you are also at the moment struggling with weepy eyeballs. Right now, I'm going to go in with this brush. This was actually the brush in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette, and I love it. Because it's flat, but it's chunky, so it gets right up under your bottom lashes really nicely. And I'm going to go in with, I think, a Twitch. And then the only shade I won't have used will be Game Over. And I'm just going to use Twitch to buff out this lower lash line being careful not to go beyond that point there because otherwise you'll ruin the elongating effect you can't really see twitch against that pink but I know it's there so 
really beautiful lime. Well, I say lime, it's like a minty, soft minty green. Oh, I've got coaty air spun up my nose. It's so finely milled. It's one of the reasons I love that, that powder. I um, I bought a tub off of a mate of mine that had bought one when she went to America and couldn't get on with the smell. And I absolutely love it. I've got so many face powders, including Laura Mercier. And I still keep going back to Coty as the best one for my skin. Yeah, you really can't see that green. <coughs> right, now this, believe it or not, is a lip brush, which I bought off of eBay probably 10 years ago now. Yeah, that long. Uh, which highlighter do I want to use? That's a very, very good question. I think I might go in with... I haven't used this NYX one for a while. This is their Duochrome in Twilight Tint. You can see it's got like a bluey, purpley shift to it, which I think will pick up nicely with the brows. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Um, you don't have to use a highlighter here, you could just use a light shade, sort of two or three shades lighter than your skin tone um, but I like to have a little bit of shimmer there it just, it makes the brows look higher and more raised because our brows do drop after the whole fat, everything drops as you get older um, so by having a bit of light there making it look as if it's your brows are higher up it uh, gives the illusion of youth I don't know now I like to continue this under the eye and just blend it with the colours that I've been running underneath. I've been in the process of sorting out my makeup storage from the individual little like travel case boxes that I had them in because it just wasn't practical. Um, and because uh, Jessica, my friend on here, is um, she's just redone her this is my makeup collection videos and she's saying you should do yours again and I'm like um oh, yeah I need to make sure it looks halfway decent then because she's got all these gorgeous like Alex type drawers from um, Ikea um, what colour do I want to use on my cheeks Highlighter drawer out. One of my little highlighter drawers out, I should say. Actually, I haven't used that one for quite a while. This is from a UK indie brand called River Cosmetics, but it's R I V E H R. And this is their shade number one, which I believe is Malibu, of their glass skin. Highlight, which looks like this. You can see I've, I've I've gone in with this one. I think I shall use this over the rest of my face. Yeah, I like that. Right, I'm going to pause you one more time, just while I chuck this over my face, put some mascara on, and choose a lippy. Do something with my hair, and I'll be back for the final look. Hello, I am indeed back and my hair is doing its own thing again. Um, I used my usual Catrice Glam and Doll Volume Mascara Waterproof. Absolutely love that. Um, it's an absolute dupe for Benefit Bad Girl Bang, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper. And actually, I think I've had that going for four months and it's still wet and it's still good and it's not irritating my eyes so technically I should have thrown it away a month ago but the lippy is one of the Maybelline ones they bought this range out called For Me 
which was four different shades but each shade will work on skin from paler than me right the way through to like Nima Tang colour. Um, this is the mauve one, so it's called mauve for me and it's number 373 if you're looking to get it yourself. As always, my setting spray is Gerard Slay All Day. I'm really going through this coconut one. Love it. Uh, my Gerard discount is listed below. Uh, I think, because I showed you the highlighter, didn't I? Yep. Yep, I think that's it. Right, so, what do I think of this little mini palette? I love it. It's so much fun. I love the little pixelated cat on the front and the little details like the the life hearts here and level up your makeup and just the fact they've done the mirror as a heart uh, and again the, the holographic printing on this has been done kind of almost pixelated around the edges I don't know if that's showing up or not hopefully it will hopefully I can tweak it in edit so you can see it properly but I, I really like this, um, I mean I used all the shades except Game Over, that red in the corner, and then you can't really see Twitch that well underneath my eyes. Um, loving this, uh, I used, I'd used the top three shades before, and there was no fading on them at all through the day, which for pastel colours is really good going, because normally they will after about six or seven hours start to sort of muddy together or kind of disappear um, but you know the three that I'd used across the top here that I used in one complete eye look though I know those three lasted me eight nine hours before I took my makeup off and they were still looking just as fresh as when I'd first put it on I wasn't looking as fresh as when I first put it on but my, my makeup was uh, so I'm hoping that Sorry, it's telling me to take some tablets. I'm hoping that um, the citrusy shades will also prove to be as long lasting. So, do I think it's worth getting? If you're looking for a cute little pastel palette and you've got the chance of getting hold of this, then yeah, I don't see why not. Um, obviously, you've got other options. You've got Pastel Tribe from Blush Tribe. Um, you've got the Dream with the Vision palette from Makeup and Possession. There's quite a few pastel palettes out there, but this is this and the Pastel Tribe, I think, are my favourites of all the pastel palettes I've tried. So, if you are one of my regular 4F family, please double check you are still subscribed because... YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Helpful. And once you have liked and maybe dropped me a comment on this one, uh, it might be an idea just to check back and make sure you've not missed any recent uploads because uh, I know for a fact that a couple of my films did not get notifications go out because I actually, under a different email, um, signed up to my channel with the notification bell on and I didn't get notified notified by it so I know there's at least a couple of films that it's it's likely people will have missed if however you are new here hi hello welcome I hope you enjoyed the scattiness that goes on here um, I really hope you've enjoyed the film and that maybe you would like to consider hitting that subscribe button, sending it from red to green and then hitting the notification bell go on ring my bell ring my bell if you're not sure however or if you have subscribed and can't wait for the next film there's an awful lot that you can go back and look through from I've been doing this now for about a year and a half, so you've got quite a few uh, films to check because I think I've done on average about minimum three a week. So, yeah, put your feet up, grab a snack and indulge. Right, all 
all that remains, as ever, for me to say, is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.